بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم السلام علیکم اسٹوڈنٹس ٹوڈے وی آر گوئنگ ٹو ڈسکس انادر امپورٹنٹ ٹاپک ٹاپک از مینی سپر پوزڈ وائبریشنس of the same frequency this is our today's topic listen to me patiently and keenly to enjoy the lecture so in last lectures first we discussed the superposition of two shms of equal frequency then we discuss the superposition of two shms or vibrations of different frequency and we uh, explained the idea of beats we talked about the beat frequency now same procedures that we used in dealing with those topics can be used to describe the superposition of an arbitrarily large number of vibrations now the general case is of no great importance but one situation in particular is of great interest and wide application that is the case of superposition of a number of of a number of sms all of the same frequency and amplitude and with equal successive phase differences this particular case of superposition we have to discuss in today's lecture i repeat we have to discuss the superposition of a number of simple harmonic oscillations all of which have the same frequency and amplitude and with equal successive phase differences now why it this case is of great importance because it has relevance to the analysis of multiple source interference effects in optics and other wave processes so let us discuss this particular interesting case of superposition of shms now the situation is represented in figure 1 let me draw the figure 
the situation is represented in figure one. Let me use next page for the figure. Let me complete the figure, then we will discuss. Let this be point O. Use another color for next thing. We complete the figure first and we use this color now. This we can see. Now, let me use another color. This we are. Let this angle be omega t. Let this angle here be delta then don't draw this let this be p now this be a all of these are a naught a naught a naught this is a naught this is a naught let this point be b point let this be k let this be l and let this angle be delta this is my Figure one, let me check it. Then we will move. And this angle, I have to see. Let this angle here be alpha. This is omega t. This is b. This is k l. This a naught. This delta. This alpha. Right. So let us move to discuss where to discuss the superposition of number of shms all 
of the same frequency and amplitude and with equal successive phase differences. So let us understand the situation in figure one. We suppose that there are n com combining vibrations. So we suppose that there are n combining vibrations each of amplitude a naught and differing in phase differing in phase from the next one by an angle delta right see what we have shown in the figure now this is one vector with length a naught this another 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 vector with length a naught so we are using rotating vectors to represent the combining shms so i have shown one two three four five five uh, suppose but you have to imagine there are n combining vibrations now this each vector with length a naught is representing a combining simple harmonic motion right now all the five which i have shown in the figure have length a naught that means the shm represented by this these vectors have amplitude a naught as you know we are discussing it now you have to assume that these are n vibrations or n shms right so we have, you have to imagine that there are n number of these rotating vectors each of length a naught right we have shown in the figure five ones now then there is another thing now all of these have same amplitude a naught so length of the rotating vector is a naught and each one differs in phase from the previous one by angle delta so you can see the first vector having length a naught then the next one is making angle delta with first one the second one differs in phase with the first one by angle delta so delta is the phase difference between second one and first one similarly if i produce this this is also delta this angle is also delta that means third one differs from the second one with delta phase difference similarly fourth one differs from the third one with phase difference delta and same goes for all the combining shms right so we have n combining shms all of which have amplitude a naught and each one differs in phase from the next one by angle delta right now this vector op is what this is the this is representing the resultant simple harmonic motion 
because it is the resultant of all these rotating vectors. So the rotating vector OP represents the resultant SHM. It has amplitude A in this figure and it is making angle alpha with the first oscillation which itself is making angle omega t with the horizontal right i hope it is clear to you now let the first of let me use this color let the first of the component vibrations be described for simplicity by the equation x is equal to a naught cos omega t. Now the first of the component vibrations we represent by this equation x is equal to a naught cos omega t. You can see this x is basically the projection of this first rotating vector on the horizontal axis. You can see this x, this length is a naught, which is the amplitude times the cos omega t. So x is the displacement uh, pertaining to the first SHM, right? Now the resultant disturbance, the resultant disturbance will be given by the equation capital X is equal to A cos omega t plus alpha. We encircle it. Let me move to the figure. You can see OP vector has length A. It represents the uh, resultant disturbance, resultant simple harmonic motion. And it is making angle alpha with the first one. So overall angle made by this OP vector with the horizontal is omega t plus alpha. So its projection on horizontal x is equal to a times cos omega t plus alpha. This is clear. Now, from the geometry of figure one, we have to conclude some certain things. First thing, we use this color from the geometry of figure one, we can see that the combining vectors form successive sides of an incomplete
regular polygon. Let me move the figure. I'm seeing these successive vectors become the sides of an incomplete regular polygon. Remember, a regular polygon is equi angular and equilateral. That means it's all angles are equal and all of its sides have equal length. And the corners of the regular polygon lie on the circumference of a circle. That means regular polygon can be inscribed in a circle. Right? So let us move. Any such polygon, let me use this color, any such polygon can be imagined to be in a scribed in a circle, right? Having some radius R and with its center center at a point C. Let me move to the figure. Now these sides, you have to, all these uh, five rotating vectors, which we have shown, L calculation, we have to take N, are now the sides of a regular polygon and all the corners of this regular polygon lie on a circle and that circle has center C and radius capital R, right? So this is actually an incomplete regular polygon. Center C, R is the radius, right? Now all the corners, as I have said, all the corners, I'm writing it so that you can write it and understand. As for example, the points K and L we have labeled two points, two corners we have labeled K and L lie on the circle and the angle subtended 
at C by any individual individual amplitude P not for example KL is equal to the angle delta between adjacent vectors. I'm seeing all the corners, for example, K and L lie on the circle and the angle subtended at C by any individual amplitude A naught, for example, KL is equal to the angle delta between adjacent vectors. Think about this and convince yourself at home. Let me move the figure. Now all these combining amplitudes are equal. Now I'm saying angle between the adjacent vectors, that is first one and second one, which is delta, second one and third one, which is delta, is the same as angle subtended at C by any individual amplitude. For example, we have shown KL, this makes angle delta. Now all these angles are delta. This is delta, this is delta, this is delta, this is delta. Right? So all the amplitudes subtend equal angles at the center. And in addition, these angles are same as the angle between successive vectors. You think about it at home and convince yourself. Right? Now, hence, the total angle hence the total angle OCP subtended at C by the resultant vector A is equal to n delta. Let us move to the figure OCP this is the angle OCP. Let me use some other color here. This is angle OCP. This full angle is angle OCP. I'm saying it is now N delta because each angle is delta. And we're imagining that N vibrations are combined. That means uh, N A naughts are combining to make the resultant vector OP having length A. Right? So angle OCP subtended by the resultant vector OP of length A is N delta. Right? So let us move. Now we can write the following geometrical statements. From figure one, I will write them, then I will explain or give hint to you, we can 
write the following geometrical statements. Let me write them. What are the statements which we can write from figure one? One thing we can write, A is equal to twice R sine of N delta by two. And I can write A naught is twice R sine of delta by two. Let me move to the figure. See, if you consider this triangle OCB, let me show a little triangle. O C B. This is R, this is R and this angle is delta. I'm talking of this triangle OCB. This is an isosceles triangle because OC is R and CB is R and the apex angle is delta, right? Base is A naught. So this is A naught, right? This is an isosceles triangle. Now, if I draw perpendicular on the base from the apex, what happens in an isosceles triangle? This perpendicular bisects the apex angle. That means this angle is now half delta, right? And that bisects the base. That means this much is A naught by two. Now when you define sine of delta by two from this little half right angular triangle, it will be perpendicular A naught by two for hypotenuse R. Some people have that the sine of delta by two will be perpendicular as A naught by two over hypotenuse is R. When you write that, you can see you can write A naught equal to two R sine of delta by two. Now the first equation you can similarly obtain when you take the full triangle, that is this triangle, OCP, OCP. Again, this I saw this triangle, OC is R, CP is R, because all the corners lie on the circle having center C, this is, then you draw the perpendicular from the apex angle on the base. Now the full angle and delta, it gets bisected by that into half and delta, half and delta, and the base is bisected into A by two. Then you define from little right angular triangle sine of half of N delta, you get this relation. Again, think about this. and convince yourself at home, right? So A is 2R sine N delta by two, A naught is 2R sine delta by two. Therefore, if we divide them, we can write A is A naught sine of N delta by two over sine of delta by two. Let me encircle it. And let me name this equation. We'll not name it any equation yet. So this is my Equation one. 
which were obtained by dividing plus two equations. So A is A naught times sine of N delta by two or sine of delta by two. So let us move to now alpha. For the now for the phase angle alpha through which the resultant A is rotated relative to the first component vector we have. You can see the first, uh, the resultant vector A is rotated related to the first component vector by angle alpha. This is the angle alpha, which is the phase angle alpha in the resultant equation. So I can write for this alpha, alpha is angle COB minus angle COP. Angle COB minus angle COP. COB is this. COP is this. So when you Subtract from COB, COP, you get the alpha, right? Now, let me oh, encircle it first. Now with angle COB is equal 90 degree minus delta by 2 and angle COP is 90 degree minus N delta by 2. I'm saying angle COB is 90 degree minus delta by 2 and angle COP is 90 degree minus N delta by 2. I will not explain it. I will give you homework this. Think about this. At home and convince yourself. Let us move to, I will give you a hint. This is angle, when you consider this triangle COB, and what do you do? You again draw the perpendicular in this isosceles triangle, then check and convince yourself. We will, you will uh, get this result. Angle COP is 90 minus delta by two. And same when you take the full triangle, you will get the second relation. By full triangle, I mean the full triangle COP, right? Therefore, when you use this in this first equation, put here COP, put here COP angle, you get alpha is equal to N minus one over two, times delta. Alpha is n minus one over two by 
n minus 1 over 2 by but times delta. So let me encircle it. Name it second. Therefore, the resultant vibration along the x axis is described by the following equation x is equal to a naught sine of n delta by 2 or sine of delta by 2 times cos of omega t plus n minus 1 delta by 2. It's my third. See how we obtained it. Let me encircle it. X is a naught sine of n delta by 2 by sine delta by 2 times cos uh, omega t plus n minus 1 delta by 2. So we have actually used using first and second. This is my first. This is my second in let me name it equation A. First and second in A. See what we did. This is our A. So we replaced A with first uh, with uh, A naught sine and delta by 2 by sine delta by 2, which is 1. And alpha in equation A using equation 2, we replaced it by n minus 1 by 2 times delta. So this equation which gives us the resultant displacement of the um, resultant vibration is basic to the analysis of the behavior of a diffraction grating, which acts precisely as a device to obtain from a single beam of light a very large number of equal disturbances with equal phase differences. With this all for today, let me summarize the lecture, what we did today. So we said we are going to discuss the superposition of vibrations, many vibrations of the same frequency. We did not uh, discuss the general case, but we discuss the particular important case of superposition of a number of SHMs of same frequency and amplitude with equal successive phase differences. Then we use the rotating vector representation. Uh, we consider the combination of N vibrations of equal amplitude A naught and the phase difference between successive vibrations was represented by delta. So we showed the situation in figure one. We showed five rotating vectors, but we assume there are n such vectors and OP is the resultant, um, uh, resultant vector. Now, the first component vibration was represented by first vector and X is written as A naught cos omega T 
because this vector makes angle omega t with horizontal axis and delta is the successive phase difference. Then we said the resultant displacement can be written as a cos omega t plus alpha because resultant vector op is making omega t plus alpha angle with the horizontal axis, right? Then we use a geometry. We said the uh, uh, component vibrations, the component vectors are sides of an incomplete regular polygon, right? The center of the circle is C, R is the radius of that circle, and all the corners, for example, K and L lie on that circle, all angles are delta, right? So the angle subtended by each amplitude at center of the circle, C is delta, which is same as the uh, angle between two successive component vectors, right? Then, I gave you one homework to think about this, how this angle uh, is delta between uh, why this angle subtended by all amplitudes at the center is same as the angle between two adjacent vectors, two successive vectors. So that you will think yourself. Then we written, uh, we wrote certain uh, equations. We wrote this equation for resultant amplitude and individual amplitude, and we divided these two equations. We got A in terms of A naught and delta. Then we uh, wrote another equation for alpha. Then we said alpha is N minus one by two times delta, then we substituted equation one and two in A and wrote the equation for the resultant vibration. So when we combine N simple harmonic motions having same amplitude A naught and differing in phase successively, by angle delta, then the resultant displacement of the resultant vibration is given by equation three and is the number of combining vibrations. A naught is the amplitude of each combining vibration. Omega is the angular frequency. Delta is the successive phase difference. This is all for today. I hope you enjoyed the lecture. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe my channel. You can give comment in the comment box. Thank you. God bless you. Assalamu alaikum.